the thing. Alright, so we jump straight into the match. Horn versus Patty. I'm actually not that surprised that Sage doesn't want to do Fox, considering uh, how difficult all the sets that he's done Fox with lately have been. Uh, since he has such a linear recovery, Sinji's really been taking advantage of that, so maybe he wants to try something a little bit tougher. And I know to kill Sage talked earlier about when I was talking to him about his revenge set against Sinji's that he wanted to use Corn against him. Hmm. So he wanted to be able to like get into his uh, danger zone, go throw out some side B's, and apply as much pressure as possible. Instead of you know where Fox is like, Fox has to get into his zone, and Pac-Man's really good at keeping him out. Where sword characters have a little easier time. Sage has always been really good at punishing air dodges, and Corn is wow. So Korn's counter, for those who don't know, is actually active until the very frame, is actually invincible until the very frame that Korn can act. So if Sage wanted to with the, Gal uh, with the Galaxian, he could have actually countered twice. But he got the first hit, so good enough. And Counter Surge does have that large blast zone afterwards, able to attack on tons of damage against Sinji. Now we see Sinji trying to approach with this back air as he gets surfs off. He's going to be pushed by that water as he throws the key backwards against a kill Sage. Yeah. For those who may not be aware, uh, Hydrant actually has a hurt box on the sides of it that any counter will activate on it, mm -hmm. including Corrin's. Yeah, and that's going to be do a lot of work. And I'm sure Sinji is very aware of this. He's never he's fought plenty of Corrin, so he's going to probably still once he throws out the Hydrant, he's probably going to stay away from it as much as he can. I'm actually, super! Wow, the man just side B kicked through the Hydrant because he kicked the Hydrant and yeah. extended the hurt box of the move, thus causing Sinji to get hit by it. Well, actually, it didn't so much extend. So, what actually happened there, and this is actually really cool, was so the way the hurtbox extension works in this game is it makes the frames that a certain part of the hurtbox, Jesus Christ, <laughs> a certain part of the hitbox, uh, stay out longer. Basically, it doesn't make it bigger, but it stays out longer. But because Sinji was spot dodging into the hydrant, the strong part, which is the initial hit of the side B, stayed out. So that was a very good move by Sage. Yeah, and speaking of good moves, we see Sinji landing that Hydra as he tries to land back down onto the ground to kill Sage, finding, trying to find an opening with these jumps. Goes for the forward smash at the very tip tip of it, hitting him with it. And now we see Sinji trying to play pickup, and what, what the, the problem with Pac-Man is he doesn't have, he has a pretty hard time trying to regain the lead once he's lost his first stock. Because the opponent can just stay away from him. And Pac-Man doesn't have too many options to try to approach an opponent. He's good at walling people out, but that's only if he has a lead. Or if it's pretty even. Oh, <laughs> all of the damage just happened there. He threw out the key, got hit by the hydrant, by the key, by his soulmates, by God himself as to send him off stage into the blast zone. So then you're gonna see a lot at neutral uh, with with Corn is he's gonna be abusing the burst range that Corn has. Corn has a really big burst range just because of side B. Uh, so what a lot of the coins like to do, and I know uh, John Numbers especially, is wait until they do something, either stay in shield too long, and then go for a grab if they're in range to do so. Because if they react too early, they might get pinned. And that was good of Sinji to avoid that said pin. You know, holding on to that shield, not getting hit by it, but now you hit him with the bat wing back here. Sinji trying to get back on stage. He's one good side B hit away from being closed out. Sinji trying to run in and extend that combo as hard as he could, but Sinji's, or because Sinji's going to throw out an attack and push Sinji away. Oh, Korn wow. gets the side B, stabs through him, hits him with a kick, but Pac-Man living as long as he can. Sitting at 147%. One more will do it. And that a throw will kill. This solid play by uh, the kill stage. Usually when you see Korn, uh, Pac-Man, especially John's uh, Korn, it has a lot of difficulty. I know Frozen does as well. Uh, but Sage is just throwing out some really good plays, and he's just spacing really well, not not focusing on the hydro too much. Something a mistake I find a lot of corns make. And he's being aggressive, but passive aggressive a little bit. Like he's like staying, he's like he's like sticking around in that zone that makes him feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but just like at the correct range so he can still land an attack in if he wants. But he's not like running in all of his business. So he's playing more passive, but he's not like camping him out. I think a better term for it might actually be like he's more opportunistic. Yeah. If he sees an opportunity, he'll go for it. Mm. I feel like it's like the most optimal way to play the game. Yeah, well, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're playing Fox. Now see the kill stage trying to change together these forward errors. Uh, <laughs> that was just unfortunate for the kill stage. He just kind of mistimed the counter surge there. If he was a little bit closer to the right, if he wasn't drifting to the left, 
He's still he would have managed to hit that hydrant. We're gonna see a bunch of counter surges coming in clutch. They send the hydrant home free. It goes sends it straight up into the air. Like I've never seen the hydrant go completely vertical. So you see, like, wow, that was an interesting galaxy. <laughs> well, he power shielded it, so it, like sends to the left. Opened. It. it flew back into space. You know, it's all. It's like it's my people need me. Yeah, for those who may not be aware, if the uh, fruit gets hit at any point during its flight, it stops having a hitbox. So when Sage uh, neared the fruit, it was completely unable to hurt him until Sinji picked it back up and threw it once more. Kill Sage running back and forth. Gonna find opening Sinji's defense. Sinji has a bell on Dex. Kill Sage's got to be careful. He throws it down, but because of the Hydra mix-up, I guess it didn't really stun him. Oh, uh, if you Z-drop the bell, it does not have a stun box. Yeah, but did, but did he Z-drop it? Or did he he, he Z-drop it. Oh, he Z-dropped it, okay. That's I thought he threw it. No, he Z-dropped it. Uh, if he had actually thrown it, he definitely would have gotten stunned. Although he would not have been positioned to uh, actually punish. Ooh, very nice. Since you're fighting an opening in the Kill Sage's weak spot, hitting him with that apple, almost finishing him off the top with it. If he gets one more apple swing in, that's going to be the Kill Sage's stock. He sees it coming, but now the Kill Sage stealing the apple. Now, this is something that Korn's able to do is that he, Korn can thrive off of B moves. So if he wanted to, he could hold on to that projectile as long as he wanted and prevent Sinji from playing his game. I uh, kind of just jumped into that Hydra, not expecting it. I, I guess he thought it was going to be up, up below him. But regardless, we're back into the second stock. Okay, now we're going to see a totally different game. This is mostly going to be Sinji trying to zone out Sage. Wow, he got stabbed in the face! And he almost got stabbed in the face again there. <laughs> That's like Korn's day job, stabbing Pac-Man in the face. He tries to go for that side B, kicking him off stage. Shinji desperately getting back onto the stage. I like the setup there from the Hydrant, just being able to throw some active hitboxes, shooting the Hydrant against to kill Sage. Oh. Now he has the Galaxian ship in hand. Mm -hmm. Like from Sages, you still see him playing super patient, despite the fact that he's at a huge, uh, he's at a stock deficit. It definitely shows the man's only at 12% damage, but Sinji's gonna get that roll on that read. Hit him with a key and tack on an easy 14. I think Sinji just realized that if he has key in hand, he can actually punish Dragon Lunge. Especially if it's uh, if it's used to run away, as it was earlier. You see Sinji trying to get the, uh, sorry, to kill Sage trying to get the correct read on Sinji's roll, like roll on the stage or get up attack. It doesn't matter, he finally gets the reverse side B, killing him off to the left side. Only taking on a mere 45 damage, he's still in this. He can still take this set 2-0. Just letting people know at home, this is the best 2 of 3 losers finals. Like, we don't do best 3 of 5s here at Xeno. Yeah, unfortunately, no, not time constraints, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, just forward tilts him into the hydrant. So there are actually, uh, despite the fact that Korn can act immediately out of counter once it ends, uh, there is that small opportunity to get a hit in. Because you can't shield immediately. So Sinji took advantage of that very well. You see the kills it's trying to find an opening in that apple, but Sinji manages to get I've seen Sinji get so many grabs today with a garbage grab like Pac-Man's. Like it's, it's kind of impressive to see all this. Now he has the bell on deck. Sinji's got to play super wary. You no know Sinji's looking for that setup. I like how Sinji just, or to kill Sinji just kind of stood right outside of the hitbox range of the bell. Comes in with the side B. I'm gonna see a rock key. Oh, that was so smart of to kill Sinji because as the hydrant was coming closer, even if Sinji didn't throw out an active hitbox, it still would have procced from the hydrant. So I Sinji would have had to shield it or anything. I'm not even 100% certain what he uh, what he countered, whether it was the uh, the hitbox from the hydrant or if it was the hitbox from the startup of up smash. Either way, well done. Yeah, and he does, he had that apple in hand. Once again, he throws it away. I'm not sure why he's not thinking about sticking onto that projectile. Because he just wants access to his aerials. Mm, that's one thing that Sinji kind of has a habit of doing, which I'm surprised to kill Sage hasn't picked up on, is he likes to land with a... Oh. That was unfortunate. To kill Sage thinking the bell was going to, like, deactivate. be over, deactivate on the edge of the stage. But he just used normal get up onto the stage and got caught by. Sinji's going to run away and see that opportunity and go for an inky up smash. Yeah, one thing is Sinji does a lot is he likes to air dodge while trying to land. And I'm surprised the kill Sinji didn't pick up on right there, because if he would have read that just correctly, he could have like hit him with an up smash, back air, sent him off stage. Yeah, definitely. Though that is a very high, uh, what's the word? It's a very high, uh, high risk. Yes, I guess high investment would be a better word for it. Is the way I was trying to think. He's of. committing to it. 
Mm -hmm. It's a very high commitment. There you mm. go. Let me see. Say. Oh, that was, that was tricky. That was cute. I like that. The kills they going for the counter. Because every single time he counter surges, he goes for a second one. But he opts to throw out the side B instead, hoping, expecting uh, Sinji to like be right there to get pinned by it. That Hydrant's going somewhere. Yeah. It's actually really interesting that Sage keeps using uh, the counter surge to... Oh, wow. That was pretty. He's using the counter surge to break Hydrant when it sends it so high up. It's not really affecting the match in any way if it goes straight up. It kind of does. He puts it out of play for a while. Because it's, because he's in, he sends it so high up that it's still active that Sinji can't immediately throw down another one. So if, that's, if anything, it does that. And it's also pretty safe. I suppose that is true, yes. City Kills are going through a bunch of these side Bs. Putting in a lot of work. Sinji's so going to jump around, trying to throw that Hydrant down on the ground. We see Sinji camping these landings. Those who may not be aware, uh, Dreamland is one of Korin's best stages, the other one being Battlefield. Due to the fact that Korin has these huge sweeping hitboxes that are perfect for catching landings, which is something that Sinji does not want happening. Half of the time when he's air stalling, he's trying specifically to avoid that. And this hopefully will give Sage a leg up, as that is his counter pick. It also prevents uh, Sinji from having uh, no platforms whatsoever, which I know Pac-Man does like, because it gives him ample opportunity to place down hydrants on the middle of the ground. Now instead he has to like throw it within the gaps in order to put the hydrant onto the main stage. See the kill stage jumping over the water, and he gets pushed into the trampoline. Sinji, you know, he's looking for that run back with John Numbers. He had such a big rivalry between the two. He wants another chance in order to take another set off of John. So I actually really like Sinji's use of the uh, up -E out of shield. For those who don't know, that is literally one of the only unblockable moves in the game. In fact, uh, not even invincibility frames can stop it from hitting you. Because it forces you into the jump animation from the trampoline. And Pac-Man, if Pac-Man's there, he will hit you. So he has a very good use of it on sh uh, whenever he gets hit on shields. I like the use of the side B there, just trying to apply pressure to sh Sinji's shield. It just gets out of the way, pushing to the left. Good opportunity from Sinji, throwing the apple down, catching with the bell, but misspacing the inky. He's still applying pressure, even though he missed the with the up smash. He's trying to go back off stage, put that hydrant into the active hitbox mode, trying to hit the kill stage on the edge of the stage. But he's still living at 154%. Goes for the neutral air off stage, and that's gonna take away to kill stage's first stock. Yeah, very poor DI. It was Sinji throwing a to kill stage throwing a bunch of neutral airs, trying to get rid of uh, Sinji's landings. Pac-Man running back and forth. He's got that orange on deck. Sage goes for the up smash. The water interrupting the middle of the throw. Yeah, the hydrant actually stopping him from finishing that. You might have been aware of that as he runs back again, uh, charging his projectiles. Sage is looking for an up air read. The kill. At this point, patience might not be the best thing for the kill Sage, as much as he. Uh... Oh. Yeah, the moment he gets impatient, he just takes 30 to 40%. It's crazy. Right, Sage jumping over it, but he gets caught by the side B. The kill stage has him off stage. We'll see if he can uh, put a point on the board. Oh! Manages to do it, calls him out, goes for the side B off stage, stabbing the Pac Man until he dies into Dreamland. This is really is where Corrin shines, is uh, at low percent. She gets free combos. He's able to rack on tons of damage that way. Sinji yet again getting another grab, ex knowing that Sinji was gonna be, or Sinji, Sage was gonna be there. He got caught by the bell, and the Hydrant's gonna apply a lot of damage. Not enough to get the kill yet, but he's sitting 133%, living a pretty dangerous life as he boldly goes forward, trying to charge in. And That's gonna be to it. Sinji taking another set off into Kill Sage today, catching with the bell, then proceeds on with the Inky up smash, setting off the top. As Kill Sage is gonna move on to get a rematch against John Numbers in Grand Finals here at Xeno 39.